Okay, so for this next lesson, we're going to start taking a look at absolute values and absolute value functions. So, for any real number, which we can represent by x, the absolute value of x is written as this x with the two lines coming down on the side. In your calculator, it's under the function a, b, s, which is under your math functions, and is always either 0 or a positive number. The absolute value of a positive number is always positive, so the absolute value of 25 is 25. The absolute value of 0 is just 0, and the absolute value of a negative number is the positive version of whatever that number is. So when we talk about absolute values, we can um, be used to represent the distance from 0 on a number line, regardless of if I'm going to the left or if I'm going to the right. So, for example, negative 4, or the absolute value of negative 4, represents the distance of the point negative 4 from 0. So if I started at negative 4, then to get up to 0, I need to travel 4 units. So if I'm stating that the absolute value of x is equal to 4, then I'm looking for how far away from 0 I can get to 4. Well, in this case, I can move 4 to the left from 0 and get this negative 4, or I can move 4 to the right from 0 and get positive 4, which means that if the absolute value of x is equal to 4, then x can either be negative 4 or positive 4. Can the absolute value of x ever be a negative value? For example, can it be negative 4? And the answer is no. We already stated that up at the top here, where we said the absolute value of a negative number is always going to be positive. So it doesn't matter what x is, that should still be a positive number, or 0 in the end. So, in general, the absolute value of a number of x is defined as the distance from 0. All right. If we're writing the following real numbers in order from least to greatest, well, the first thing is I'm going to convert these absolute values into their actual numbers. So I'm going to say that negative 3 over 4 would be the same as positive 3 over 4 or 0 0.75. The negative of the absolute value of 1.2 is actually going to be, if I ignore the negative on the outside, just the absolute value of 1.2 is just 1.2, so it's going to be negative 1.2. Absolute value of negative 5 over 3 is going to be approximately 1.67. Absolute value of negative 0 0.6 is going to be positive 0 0.6 and the absolute value of negative 2.1 is going to be positive 2.1. And now I can actually list these numbers out based on the least to the greatest. Well, this is the least. Then that would be the second smallest number, third smallest, fourth smallest, and fifth smallest. So if I'm going to list them out, I'm going to say that I'm going to start with negative absolute value of 1.2. Then I'm going to go to the absolute value of negative 0.6. Then the absolute value of negative 3 over 4. Absolute value of negative 5 over 3. And then the absolute value of negative 2.1. If I have to evaluate an absolute value expression, so I'm actually going to complete all the processes and solve it, I am going to follow the order of operations to evaluate the expression inside the absolute value symbol. And then after I've done everything inside the absolute value symbol, then I'm going to take that number and to move it outside the absolute value if it is 
already positive, it will stay positive. If it is negative, it will become positive. So for the first example, I'm going to say that I have, well, negative 2 squared is going to be, or sorry, to the power of 3 is going to be negative 8. 5 times negative 3 is going to be negative 15, and then minus 12. I can state that 3 times negative 8 is going to be negative 24, and then I can combine these two like terms and say that I have negative 27. Or the absolute value of negative 51 is going to be positive 51. On the right hand side, I can say that I have 2 minus 6 squared is going to be 36 minus the absolute value of 7 minus negative 5 is going to be the same as 7 plus 5 plus the absolute value of 8 minus 16 divided by 2 is going to be minus 8 and then minus the absolute value of negative 2. For the next step, I'm going to say that I have the absolute value of negative 34 minus the absolute value of 12 plus the absolute value of 0 minus, I can get rid of the absolute value symbol here and say that's going to be positive 2. Or 34 minus 12 plus 0 minus 2. And that is going to give me 44. If I'm determining the distance between the specified values, well, the distance between A and C from negative 8 to 0, I have to move 8 units to the right. So I could say that this would be the same as saying if I had the absolute value of 8 minus 0, because it's just solving for distance, that's going to equal 8. If I'm doing the second one, b to e, and I'm going from negative 3 to 8, then if I count it up, I have 11 units. I could also say this would be the same as the absolute value of 8 minus negative 3, which is going to give me the absolute value of 11, which would also equal 11. Now, it doesn't matter actually what order I put these in. I could have said that I had the absolute value of negative 3 minus 8, which would give me the absolute value of a negative 11, which would still give me 11. So I'm just looking for the difference between the two numbers and then taking the absolute value of that for the distance. If I'm determining the length of each horizontal or vertical line segment, well, the first thing I need to figure out is, is it a horizontal or a vertical? If it's horizontal, only x changes. If it's vertical, only y changes. So I can see for the first example, I have 9 and 9 which means that it's the x's that are moving. If I want to figure out what this distance is, I'm going to use my absolute values and say the absolute value of 4 minus negative 12 or the absolute value of 4 plus 12, which is the absolute value of 16, which is just going to give me 16 units. And there's the distance. For example, B, I can see that my X's stay the same, but my Y's change. So I'm going to solve this vertical distance saying negative 7 minus 28 and take the absolute value of it, which is going to be the absolute value of negative 35, which is going to be a distance of 35. If I have C 
where it's a and y and b and y, well obviously the y's are going to stay the same, so it's going to be the a and b that actually change. I can just state that this would equal the absolute value of a minus b, or I could have called it the absolute value of b minus a. It would have been the exact same thing. If I'm doing it for a slanted line, well, in this case, I'm going to wind up having to use my Pythagorean theorem, where if I'm doing a slanted line and I said, okay, I have the point of negative 2 and negative 5, sorry, negative 5 and negative 2, and go up to the point of 3 and 4, and I'm trying to solve for this distance, well, I'm going to use the change in x and the change in y to be the legs of this right angle triangle and then use my Pythagorean theorem to solve for the other side. So if c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, then c is going to equal the square root of a squared plus b squared. So in this case, I can state that this is going to equal the square root of absolute value of negative 5 minus 3 squared plus absolute value of negative 2 minus 4 squared or the absolute value of negative 3 minus 8 so the absolute value of negative 8 squared plus the absolute value of negative 6 squared square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared which is going to give me the square root of 100 which is going to be 10 units. If I'm looking at a common application for this, on stock markets individual stock and bond values fluctuate a great deal especially when the markets are volatile. A trading stock on Toronto Stock Exchange opened the month at 12.25 per share and dropped to 11.45, increased to 13.05 and closed the month at 12.70. Determine the total change in the stock value for this month. The total shows how active the stock was and sketch a quick graph to illustrate this. Well, I'm going to start by sketching my graph and say that I started here at 1225, then I dropped to 1145, then I went up to 1305, and then I settled at 1270. So I can see that I went down and then up and then down again and I want to say what is the total vertical change that happened so I can do this as an equation. I can say it's going to be the absolute value of, well the first change would have been 1225 minus 1145 and I'm going to add to that the change of 1145 minus 1305 and finally add to that the change of 1305 to 1270. This is going to give me the absolute value of 80 cents plus the absolute value of negative $1.60 plus the absolute value of 35 cents or 80 cents plus $1.60 plus 35 cents and it fluctuated by $2.75